Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to start off with a new chapter and that is chapter 2, data transmission. And specifically in this video we will be dealing with the types and methods of data transmission. Now, uh, this is basically the full syllabus of this chapter. For now we are only interested in part 1 and that is what exactly data is and how it, is it broken down into pieces or actually why and then as well as we will be understanding the structure of a packet and lastly what is packet switching and one should be able to describe the process again as per notes and guidance you should always be aware about these points um, at the tip of your tongue these points should always be uh, ready in your mind so now the question becomes what data actually is data is basically information like often we would say that as per data we have received from such sources again the word is synonymous to information and this information can be text images audio clips or software itself software applications and the like uh, so okay now basically imagine data as this cargo of information right now how are you going to transport this cargo of information across the network well the easier method and the one that actually had to be done in order for anything to work was by the use of data packets Da this cargo is divided into packets and they may be called as datagrams uh, you should be aware of this term in the off chance that a question comes regarding it and these packets of data these pieces of the cargo are transmitted over long distances now why would you divide this cargo into pieces there are a few reasons for this and it is for the best that you should be aware of this in order to understand the concept of data packets and exactly why are we even using them and that is because they can accommodate various bandwidths now let's suppose you have this cargo of information and it is uh, let's say 100 megabytes worth okay now if you're taking it from route a to route b and this route says we are only able to take 10 megabytes worth of information obviously you cannot uh, transport your cargo through this route now it may be possible that this is the only route that can be used or it's the only route that is free or, uh, or I should say available you could let's say have another route but this route is entirely filled with traffic so obviously you would want something that can reach to your place quicker and you are unable to use that because 100 megabytes of data are unable to travel across this 10 megabyte route so had this data been divided you could have 10 megabyte worth of packets just constantly going through this route and again that's how you would have received your information easily now it also allows you to use multiple routes obviously these packets are divided it can happen that let's say you had um, you divided your 100 megabyte into 10 packets what can happen is you send 5 megabytes uh, uh, 50 megabytes worth through one route and then what happens is this route is now busy it's constantly processing this 50 megabytes you can simply use another route for the other 50 megabytes so all of them can reach as quickly as possible to your place and obviously in this world patience is not a thing so keeping that in mind that's one reason now the other thing is because you uh, allowing this cargo be divided into pieces means that if a part of this cargo is lost somewhere you are able to retransmit just that part rather than the whole cargo which again puts a strain on the network takes a lot of time and is heavily unnecessary like if I ordered 10 red balls and one of them was blue um, I can simply just say I need another red ball rather than saying uh, just send me the 10 all over again or a more actually appropriate example would be you saying you wanted 10 red balls and you only got nine you can simply order another red ball rather than you know just saying i give give me over the 10 red balls again i demand a refund and uh, okay the next thing is that uh, should the pathway the port the route the node be broken or it's over busy processing or there is any other issue you are simply able to use an alternate pathway uh, I'll show that in the later slides but for just for your understanding right now if one of the pathways that it's taking is unable to process this data you can simply use another pathway and that means again you can get the, your information when you want it and so now the we are done with the first part the second is the structure of a packet now imagine this uh, excuse me 
Okay, we go question slide six. Slide. OBS is so slow. Right, as I was saying now, imagine you have uh, uh, this uh, piece of information. It can be just one long text message. Hello, how are you? How to finish the syllabus in an hour? Now, what happens is this is basically what you can assume to be the cargo of the data. You want to divide this into packets, into pieces, so it, they are easier to transmit, right? So what would happen is you divide this into three pieces. Hello, how are you? And how, again, how to finish the syllabus. Now, each of these pieces, each of these packets, and you should be very careful about this, it's each of these packets. So this, uh, this, as well as this, will ha contain a header, a payload, and a trailer. Now, as per your syllabus, you should be aware that packets do contain uh, a header, payload, and trailer. And the main thing you should know is that the packet header contains the destination address, the packet number, as well as the originator's address. They contain a lot of other things, but those are unnecessary. Um, the header, for uh, as per again your knowledge, now the header will say where was the source. It will say it went from Ali's computer to Ahmed's. And then it will also ask exactly which computer does it have to go to, which is again the IP address of the receiving de device. And lastly, it will have the sequence number of the packet. For example, it will say this is packet one of three, this is packet two of three, and this is packet three of three. That way, um, you can obviously reorganize this when it is received, and you will uh, understand in a bit why reorganization of this data is important. Now, uh, after the header, we would have the payload, and the payload actually contains the data that needs to be transmitted, and it's usually 64 kilobytes. So this hello, the string of text would be in the payload. And lastly, you would have the trailer. Basically, you can say it's the ending mark or the ending sign, and it would contain method of identifying the uh, end of the packet, as well as some form of error checking. Right, so okay, by the way, the header might also contain the packet size, and again, it can say that the packet is 32 kilobytes of data. Right, um, it includes both the header and the payload and the trailer. Right, so let's suppose the header says 32 kilobytes of data when the computer receives it, it uh, says uh, it uh, knows that it received 31 kilobytes of data, and then when it compares that 31 against the headers saying 32, it can understand an error took place and it can take measures to correct them. So again, back to the trailer, uh, it contains a method of identifying the end of the packet. Again, you can just assume it to be the closing mark, like a full stop for that specific sentence, that specific packet. And it would also contain some form of error checking to obviously ensure that all of this data, or this packet you have sent is in fact correct. So this is written in a book, although not directly mentioned, uh, it is asked for and so it's best that you are aware and this is something known as cyclic redundancy check. Now cyclic uh, check is basically a method of using algebraic complex mathematics for doing something and redundancy means redundant. If we say this, um, uh, this piece of information is redundant, we say it's unnecessary. It's sort of, I would not say useless, but yeah, it's unnecessary. It does not add on to anything. And that uh, this cyclic redundancy check is a method of error checking and it's contained in the trailer. Now, why do you call it redundant? It's simply because you could technically send all of your data and all of your information without this thing, but there is a chance that data is wrong. So it's added more of a closing statement, more of a verifier than anything else. All right. So now what happens in this is let's assume in the payload you had written hi and this is uh, hi written in Unicode. Um, what would happen is that the computer adds up all of the one bits in the payload. So this was the payload and it contained the message hi. Actually, let's just remove the apostrophe marks because they are technically their own characters. Now, this is H, this is I. It would add the number of one bits. So there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. There are a total of six uh, one bits. Uh, this value would now be stored up in the trailer. Right, so the trailer now says that the payload contained six one digit bits or actually it would just yeah it would say uh, the payload contained six one bits now when this data is received by another person what happens is the, that computer would recalculate the number of one bits in here right and if this value does not match with the trailer 
you can be sure that you can be assured that a transmission error has occurred so again basically the payload would calculate the number of one bits um, the total number of one bits uh, right and this value is then stored up in the trailer when the comp when another computer receives it it recalculates the number of one bits and compares it with the trailer and if they match then all well and good if they do not then a transmission error has occurred and lastly uh, part three is packet switching now again you should be aware about what exactly the syllabus is because that is the main and most important thing and the pack process is perfectly described in these one two three five points right now i have uh, now why do we use the word switching in here you will understand in a moment uh, let's just go back basically in here this is basically going to be packet switching this explanation just a moment yeah there we go basically data is broken down into packets uh, again we have talked why and how now e the each of these packets can take a different route and again i'll explain it in a moment with the example uh, a router controls the route a packet would take again the shortest path available would be selected the shortest path available to your destination to its destination actually would be selected now this path could actually not be the shortest in actual length but it is the shortest in terms of time because let's assume you have a traffic in this one big road and in the other you don't although this other road takes a lot of time obviously you would go for the other road and uh, uh, assuming that other road saves you some time right so this is um, basically what this meant now these packets may arrive out of order and once they do all of them arrive they are reordered right so let's just quickly get into here uh, the example now assume these are routers one two three four five six and this computer the whatever data this computer a is going to send data to computer b for example it's sending uh, it can be whatever let's just say a cat image now this cat image was divided into three packets red green blue now what happens is this computer wants to send the image to computer b so computer a will send the data to router a and router a uh, uh, telling it that i want the stuff to be attained to computer b so this router will now find the pathway t uh, that needs to be taken in order to reach place b now what happens is we can again it's a bit laggy so excuse that please um, no nope, we clicked on the wrong thing there we go okay now assume you had the packets over here what would happen is right now both routes are empty and both routes right so these packets these three packets and router a will simply take whatever direction they feel like so green and blue might decide to go to router one red decides to go to computer uh, uh, to router three now it's going now red is at router three right now it's going to see how can i reach this place and what would be the shortest way now you can see there are two packets over here to router two obviously it would not want to take that so it will just go for router six uh, to router six or it could have gone to router one and again let me just uh, explain that and, and uh, actually not explain yeah one thing you should notice that sometimes these packets do not really uh, get, do, they do get confused or they might just decide to go wherever they feel like in the sense that they know they have to reach this place but they will constantly take different pathways if they feel like this is faster so again two seems fast enough for this it will go for two now this again s thinks that oh router three is also free let's just use router three and they did not use router one because two packets are already over there now what happens is it reaches this place and look four packets over here obviously it does not want to use this route it will simply go for router four again uh, this packet does not have any choice but to move forward so it will go to six and uh, it will again go to four okay uh, this is actually place you properly there we go now again from this router you could go backwards you could go to a different router but again two packets are already pathway over there or you could again all go to router four now what happens is let's assume there is this packet at router five and actually let's duplicate that over onto here as well right and there's a packet over here what will happen is green will go over there because it's like okay there's only there, if there are just two packets on uh, if there is one packet each on any path let's just go for whatever right blue will now think that oh there is green and white on one route and only white on one route 
so it will choose that red um, red is does not really have any choice okay. actually it does have a choice so it will just choose whatever now again these packets can be lost for example this note could have been lost and blue would have not arrived uh, I'll explain that in a moment as well but for now actually we should just look into seeing how they actually reach the place now again blue is over onto that router and this packet has reached its place green and blue will now reach that place as well respectively oh, wrong thing selected uh, green reaches router the red reaches the router as well as blue now and all of this data is now sent over to your computer in a moment uh, the one thing you should now understand here is that look at the order they arrived in originally it was red green blue now it is blue uh, red green now what happens is in the trailer as I mentioned before the sequence number is already actually the trailer would not have it there sorry the header would have it I don't know why I wrote that <laughs> white uh, ignore that as I was saying um, the header would actually have this this is slightly incorrect so the red one says we are first in order now what would happen is this router understands that fact so it would rearrange itself to be red first now it knows that green is second in order because of the header green would be arranged second and then you would have blue right now and there we go that was how it would have exactly reached now again as i was saying why did we divide all of this into packets let's assume you were sending this one cargo over on to node 2 and the node 2 got uh, the router 2 got destroyed uh, now these packets are permanently lost and the computer now needs to resend all of them all over again right now again assume you could have had sent another packet over here and then again this router gets lost now you lost a piece of information or you could say half of this information the computer still needs to you know re-ask for the information but now it only needs to ask for half or more so less time is taken for that packet to travel to the place now there is this thing again it's not in your syllabus but you should be aware is that occasionally packets get lost in the amount of time they are hopping right this process is known as hopping moving from point a to point b now it moves here 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 occasionally there's a chance that it does not move forward or does not attempt to reach its destination see as per red it's not trying to reach router b now in this case again it's not in its labels but it is just to clear the concept there is something known as the limit for the packet hopping for example it can say that the limit for hopping is five now what it means is that from it the packet would now have a digit that thing that the pa maximum times it can travel is five right so what would happen is that let's assume it went here that's one so it would now the it would say that it can tra travel only four more times now it ha can travel only three more times uh, there we go now it can travel only two more times now only one more time and now it cannot travel now what happens is there we go it reached five and now it can say it, it cannot travel any more times this router here will simply destroy this packet why is it done it's done simply because th there's a chance this packet will constantly keep on traveling and traveling and never reach the place or it would take hours or a great amount of time on end to try and reach that place so that packet is simply destroyed so that way the network is not locked because assume you have thousands millions if not billions of packets constantly going through a route and if they constantly just keep uh, going from one place to another without trying to reach the destination obviously they are taking up space and the traffic and the processing time but they are not doing anything beneficial or efficient or useful so that was uh, something known as packet hopping again not directly mentioned in your syllabus but something just to help clear your concept right with that we come to an end of this chapter in case you have any query you can simply comment down below and uh, inshallah tomorrow we will be doing question uh, we'll be doing part two and then the day after part three uh, the universal syllabus overall this is a rather, rather easy chapter and you should probably enjoy that while you can because after that a lot of other complex chapters begin to arrive i won't say they're necessarily that complex except the robotics one but yeah allah Hafiz.